students. In today's video, we will be going over the Pythagorean theorem. So first, our essential question is, how is the Pythagorean theorem used to find the missing length, side lengths of right triangles? So one more time, how is the Pythagorean theorem used to find the missing side lengths of right triangles? So first, let's talk about the Pythag Pythagorean theorem and what it is. So the first thing to note is that when we're talking about the Pythagorean theorem, we are talking about right triangles. And a right triangle is a triangle that has a 90 degree angle um, on one of the angles. So that is usually denoted by this square right here. So whenever you see a square, that's telling you that this is a 90 degree angle. Okay, and when we're talking about Pythagorean theorem, this can be used only when we're talking about right triangles that have that 90 degree angle. Now, there are different parts of a triangle, and two of the parts are, they're called legs or sides. And so these are the sides that are the shortest. So A and B are the shorter side lengths or the legs. And the longest side is called the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. So for instance, I always think of it kind of like this creates an arrow. So with that um, 90 degree symbol. So as you can see, it kind of makes a little arrow right here. And whatever is across from that makes the um, hypotenuse, which is the longest side length. So once again, we've got our two legs, which are two sides, and they're always going to be the shorter ones. And the longest side is the hypotenuse, which is always going to be across from the right angle, which is 90 degrees. So if you're ever trying to figure out which one is the hypotenuse, find the 90 degree angle and look at the one that it's pointing towards, and that's going to be your longest side. Now the Pythagorean theorem states that in a right angle triangle, so again, it's important to note that this only works when you're talking about a right angle triangle, so only right angle triangles, the square of the hypotenuse, so remember the longest side, is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. Okay, and basically that formula looks like this. So as you read, it says the square of the hypotenuse, so the hypotenuse is going to be C, the longest side squared, is equal to the sum, so when you add those two together, of the squares of the other side. So this is a very important formula because we're going to use it all the time when we're talking about Pythagorean theorem. Now a visual representation of this, it looks really weird, but this kind of tells you how the squares work with Pythagorean theorem. But this would be a um, perfect right triangle that you can use when you're talking about the Pythagorean theorem. And what you've got here is you've got a triangle that is a three by three. So that means it has nine square units. You've got another one that's four by four, which is 16 square units. And another one that is five by five, which is 25 square units. Now that means that the length of this triangle that it forms on the inside has a side length of three, a side length of four, and a side length of five. The longest side, again, being the one that is across from the 90 degree angle. But what we want to do is we want to see why this is true and how that fits into our formula. So if I plug these in, and remember I had A, B, and C. A and B are the shorter sides, and C is the longer side. So all I did was I plugged those numbers into our formula A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And we said, okay, three has to be A, because that's the shortest side. Four has to be B, because that's the next shortest side. And the longest side is five, so that is our C. Now, if this side, when we evaluate it, equals this side when it's evaluated, then you know that this is a perfect right triangle. However, if one side is different from the other, then you would say, oh, this is not a perfect triangle. However, when we um, find the squares of those and add them together, we see that both sides equal 25, which tells us that this is a perfect right triangle. Now again, if say this was 24 equals 25, then that would not make it a perfect right triangle. However, since both sides of the equation are the same, then that means that three, four, and five form a perfect right triangle. So this might seem a little confusing, but I think by the time you finish this video, it'll start to make a little bit more sense. 
So let's actually do a little bit of math and try to find the missing lengths of right triangles. So let's say that we had this uh, triangle, but we want to figure out what is this side length right here. You want to use your Pythagorean theorem to be able to figure this out. Now what we do is we just plug in those numbers. So we have the two shorter sides are plugged into the left side, but we don't know what the hypotenuse is because if we look across from the right angle, that is our hypotenuse. We don't know what it is, so we just use x as our variable. Then what we do is we start to um, evaluate it. So 5 squared is 25, 12 squared is 144. And when I add that together, I get 169 equals x squared. Now, if you remember from solving equations, um, I think it was in the last lesson, what you have to do to uh, get the value of x is square root both sides, or ask yourself what times what equals 169? What same number? And we know that that has to be 13. So that tells us that this side length is going to be 13, which makes sense too, right? If it was less than 12, you know you have a problem because this side has to be longer than these two sides, okay? But since it's bigger, then you know at least you're on the right track. But by using the Pythagorean theorem, you can find out what that missing value is. All right, so let's try one that's a little bit different. Now this time we see the hypotenuse does have a value, but this time um, one of the side lengths do not. Now when you plug this in, honestly, this could I, the x could have been with the a, where the a was originally, or the b. It really doesn't matter. Um, in this case, I just plugged it in for where the a is. But this time, what's different from the last one is that we took this 13.3 and we plugged it into c because that is our hypotenuse. That's our longest side. So this time, we are trying to find one of the legs rather than last time when we were trying to find the hypotenuse. So just like you do when you're solving equations, you need to start evaluating. And obviously on this type of problem, this is not as uh, friendly to do by hand, so you are more than welcome to use a calculator. And if you use a calculator to evaluate this, you end up getting numbers like this. My suggestion is if it's ever, always round to the hundredths, okay, unless told otherwise, but that's gonna give you more accurate numbers. So round to your hundredths. And what we have to do here is start solving an equation. So we want to get x to the second x squared by itself. And the opposite of adding 94.09 would be to subtract it from both sides. So you're just solving equations. And again, you can use a calculator to make this more simple. But you get x squared equals 82.8. Now again, you're going to want to use a calculator because it's going to be pretty difficult for you to figure out exactly the number when multiplied by itself is something that is a decimal. Okay, so use a calculator, and again, you find the square root of that to find that number. And we find out we get x equals 9.1. 9.1. And think about that. Does that make sense? Okay, is 9.1 smaller than our hypotenuse? Okay, that's good, because if it was bigger, then we know we have a problem. And it's a little bit smaller than the side over here, which is fine, and it could have gone either way. But that tells us that um, we probably did our math right just by kind of spot checking and making sure that the math makes sense. All right, you have a couple of practice problems to try here. Remember, um, and these are both right triangles, again. On this one, you're trying to find the missing length for the hypotenuse. On this one, the missing length for the side or the leg. Take a few minutes and solve that problem. All right. Now let's talk about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem and how it's used to determine if something is a right triangle. So before we have taken a little bit of time to figure out how do we find the missing side lengths, but how do we determine if it is actually a um, right triangle? And these things, you're gonna learn more about these as you get into higher math, but these are called proofs. And these are used to prove something in math. So how do we prove something is a right triangle? Now, the converse of the Pythagorean um, theorem is very similar to what we talked about earlier. Basically, again, it states that the sum of the squares of the two shorter sides equal the square of the longest side. So just like before. Now, say that you were given a triangle like this, and you wanted to prove that it was a right triangle. To prove that it was, you would plug it in to our formula, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay, and although I haven't written it above it on each one of these, I highly suggest that you do go in 
Um, and before you start plugging in, write out a squared plus b squared equals c squared because that will help you um, visualize it. And my pen on here is just not that good. But when you plug that in, if the left side equals the right side, then you know that this triangle is, in fact, a right triangle. However, if it does not, then it is not. And you are going to have some examples where you're going to have to solve and try to figure out, is that true? You're trying to prove, is that a right triangle? And if we um, start to solve for this and we start to evaluate, um, we square all the sides and we get 25 plus 144 equals 169. And when we add the left side together, we get 169. Since those two sides equal each other, then we know that this is true, that these three numbers do create a right triangle. So that proves that it's a right triangle. All right, so let's look at another one. Okay, so is this a right triangle? What we want to do is we want to plug these numbers into our formula. So 3 goes where A, 12 goes where B goes, and 16 being the longest side is our hypotenuse, so that goes on the opposite side. And then what you do is you start evaluating. So 3 squared, find out what 3 squared, 12 squared, and 16 squared is. And then when you figure that out, add up your left side, and see, does the left side match the right side? And in this case, it doesn't. So 153 is not the same as 256. So what this tells us is that this does not, oops, this should not be a check mark. Let's put a big X there. But this does not create a right triangle. Okay, so this does not create a right triangle because those two sides do not match. Okay, so let's check another one. So again, we've got our two legs. And honestly, when you do see it on your homework, you might see these moved around. You might see them. You're not always going to see the hypotenuse um, like right here. You might see a triangle that is drawn in a different direction. So for instance, you might see something that looks like this, where this is your right triangle. So just be aware that you're always looking for that hypotenuse, OK? But let's try to see and prove if this is a right triangle or not. So we've got our A, which is going to be one of our shorter sides. We've got B, and we've got C. And we have to plug those in. So what we have is we've got 10 squared plus 24 squared equals 26 squared. Remember, with our hypotenuse being our longest side on the right side. So then, like I said before, I think you do have a paper that gives you a lot of these perfect squares, which will make it easier. But if not, you can use a calculator. And we get these numbers. Take your left side, add it up. And if it equals your right side, then that is, and you can see I got my arrows mixed up. Um, but this one actually is, so sorry about that. This should not be an X. This should be a check mark. That's perfect. Okay, so this is true. This is true. Ignore that crazy X right there where I messed up. But this is true because the two sides equal each other. So 676 equals 676. So this is, in fact, a right triangle. All right, now you have a couple problems to try on your own. What you're, and I'm going to tell you right now, these are the right angles right um, down at the bottom left corner, just like we had before. But plug this into the Pythagorean theorem. If the left side is the same as the right side, then you know it is a right triangle. Take a few minutes and solve this problem. All right, last one. We've got a couple word problems I want to go through. So on these types of problems, my suggestion is to make sure that you draw out your picture first, or else this could get very, conf very confusing. So it says the bottom of a ladder must be placed three feet from a wall. The ladder is 12 feet long. How far above the ground does the ladder touch the wall? So first you know you've got the ground, okay? And you've also got a wall. And from there you can see that creates a perfect 90 degree angle. Now imagine there is a ladder and it is leaning up against that wall. So there is your ladder. And as you can see that forms a perfect triangle. Remember, it's very important for you to draw these pictures out or you will have a difficult time solving it. Now it says the bottom of the ladder is three feet from the wall and the ladder is 12 feet long. 
but the question is, how far above the ground does the ladder touch the wall? So we're trying to find out what is this right here. So we're trying to find out the height of the wall. So this is our x. This is our unknown. So from there, we use our Pythagorean theorem. Now across from the right angle is our hypotenuse. So we know right now that we have got an a, okay, so our, an, or a b, it doesn't really matter. This is our a, this is going to be our b, and this is going to be c. And we have to plug that into the Pythagorean theorem. So it should look just like this, 3 squared plus x squared equals 12 squared. Because obviously this is going to be our much longer side. So 3 squared is 9 and 12 squared is 144. And from there we need to get the 9 moved over here so that x is by itself. We need to isolate our variable. So to do that, we have to subtract 9 from both sides, which gives us x squared equals 135. Now you can see this is not going to be a perfect square, and a lot of your word problems won't be a perfect square. But make sure you just pay attention to whatever it's asking you to round to. But if you use your calculator and you find out the square root of this, you would see that x equals 11.62. So that tells us the height of the wall is 11.62 feet. So 11.62 feet, which makes sense, okay? The height of the wall should be a little bit smaller than the height of our ladder. But as you can see, drawing those pictures is very helpful. All right, last problem. A brick walkway forms the diagonal of a square garden. And that's a new word that we haven't talked about that we're gonna talk about right now, but a diagonal. All right, the walkway is 20 meters long the nearest length of it, or to the nearest length of a meter, how long is one side of the garden? So it says a brick walkway forms the diagonal of a square garden. So your first hint is to draw a square, and that is your garden. Now a diagonal, which is going to show up a couple times on your homework, is simply a line from one corner to the other. And it's saying that this is a walkway, and that walkway is 20 meters long. Now it says, how long is one side of the garden? Now this is where it's a little bit different than what we've done before. This is a square, which means these two sides, all the sides of the square, are going to be the same. So when you oops, find this out, and I apparently just gave you the answer, but let's still go through the problem anyways. But what you do on this one is, instead of having two different variables, you actually have the same variable, because you know that this is going to be the same length as the width, okay? So that means x is the variable that we're going to use for both sides because we know it's the same. You don't want to use a different variable or you're going to think it's a different number. So x squared plus x squared then is simply 2x squared. And then we also want to evaluate our 20 squared first. And we get 2x squared equals 400. So that's telling me now that I need to isolate that variable and to do that, I divide both sides by 2. And remember, we have 2x squared because we had two x's that represent each side length, and they are the same. So when we divide by 2 on both sides, we get x squared equals 200. And when you use a calculator to find the square root of that, you get our answer that we see over here already. And so what this tells you is that these, this is A and B, they just happen to be the same this time, and that's okay as well. So you can sometimes get square, um, or the side lengths or the legs that are the same, but when you have problems like this, make sure you read carefully, because if you don't read carefully that this is a square and pay attention that the two sides are going to be the same, it would have been really difficult to solve this because you have two unknown side lengths, but really, once you find out one side length, since it's a square, you know the other side length as well. All right, so you have one problem to solve, and that's the last year practice problems. And then if you have any questions on this, we will go over it in class tomorrow. Thanks.